All right, so welcome everyone to the VISTA PSO Blend Facilitation Team webinar. This is our official kickoff to the summer training season, and we have some uh, exciting changes based on work that was done between the fall and the beginning of this year. For those of you that haven't trained in a while, the good news is, is that some of your amazing colleagues helped us work out a lot of kinks in the system. So I think at this point we're in a really great place uh, with all of our systems and processes as we move into summer. So watching the Stephen Pimpare video and, or yeah, the, that video and just um, taking that in, um, that is a, um, that's optional, but it's encouraged. That's really one of the only options activities that we have. And, um, you know, one of the, one of the kind of hallmark activities is we also have them work um, making sense of their VAD. So it's, again, a, wor a worksheet, but just been kind of tweaked a little bit. And um, they also have now as part of the PSO blend, we ask, ask them to complete a comprehension check quiz. That's not anything that you'll have to grade that's self-graded, but that is something that they need to, to complete. And that really asks them um, to make sure they understand their terms, conditions, benefits, um, to the end, sort of the legacy of VISTA. So they kind of have some logistical stuff that, that they're taking care of that information before. And that's stuff that they also go over and touch on in those, those VT webinars, so hopefully they'll be prepared to do that. But that's something you won't have to um, grade. Okay, so then um, week two, uh, this is when we will, um, you'll, be, you'll be leading um, a meetup, your first meetup. So we have a total of two meetups and that, those happen in week two and three. So the idea is that we're really, um, you know, we're really engaging them in um, both in the online space but also in a distance kind of webinar space. And that first week is really handled by the VTU and then um, the week two and three are, are where you're kind of working with the group directly and um, those meetups are required and so we've, we've got some um, ways to encourage people but, uh, to, to attend those because we're really, um, you know, with, that kind of plays along with the goal of having people um, get to know each other a little bit and feel comfortable um, building a little bit of community in these small groups. Um, something that I know that uh, they often get when they're in person, but that we've been striving to do as part of the VISTA, um, the PSO blend. Um, there are also, uh, many of you are familiar with the community profile um, activity, and that is something that happens now in the second week. So they'll be doing that um, activity very similar to before, um, but, you know, a little bit, a little bit updated. And then we have them working to um, working on 13 lessons on poverty. So it's a three-part assignment now, but, um, and then that's just really kind of for the sense of um, it was better for grading to have, to have it broken into three assignments, um, but it's all on the same kind of topic and should be, um, seems to be something that people can accomplish easily. And so again, those are um, the community profile assignment and the 13 lessons, is, those are due on that, um, that following, that next Sunday. And um, the meetup will take place on Wednesday, and that's at a set time. So we'll talk a little bit more about those meetups, um, but that's at a set time on Wednesday. Um, and then week three, we have a second meetup, um, second and final meetup, and that, um, that again is, is we've, we've actually updated those as well. So you'll have a chance to take a look at the, um, the PDF files, and we have all the, you know, bunch of notes in there. So both meetup one and two have been revised, and, um, yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about those, but that takes place. And then um, that OSOT assignment that um, they would have had access to the, the beginning um, at that, during that week one, um, they're going to actually turn it in um, at this point. And then there's a looking forward um, act, re reflection activity that is, that is due that final week. So, um, and I want to let you guys know that you'll, you'll have access to the course itself, of course, to take a look at what, um, 
you know, what the actual assignments are. But in addition to that, we, we've we added a, um, a workbook, which I think we're going to talk about soon, um, which has a, a nice um, overview for, and I'm looking at that too because it's, it's helpful for me to see sort of an overview of what people are asked to do and when, and um, and so that's, that's available to you too. So that's kind of a snapshot. The end of course is, um, the official end of course will be that Friday of week three. So while, um, you know, we're, we're having just as know that that's the last day, however, they will most likely have some, a few of them have some assignments trickling in and that you can accept um, all the assignments that are due um, before Wednesday. So you'll be reaching out to them at various points, which we'll talk about to give some reminders, but that um, Wednesday is when we'd like to get um, all the final grading done. And um, as a, um, especially for the folks who um, haven't um, facilitated for a little while, the, the PSO blend is now all these these assignments are required and the completion is required of all of these assignments. Um, yeah, and so that that grading deadline is, um, as well as some, several of the grading deadlines are um, the points at which the VTU gets involved. And so hopefully, um, you know, with your diligence and checking people off and making sure they attend things, and that will set everybody up pretty nicely for um, that. And I just wanted to add in relation to how this dovetails with classic, um, we have, there are a lot of check-in points and you'll see that when we go over the due dates for you guys to check in with students and grading. So we have not scheduled anyone to overlap weeks one through three with classic. So if you're doing a blend, you will not have a PSO classic during that time. You may, if we get into a bind, need to overlap with week four, but we think that'll be okay um, because most of the assignments will come in the Friday before on week three. So we can talk about that if you end up getting scheduled to overlap with week four in a classic, but for the most part, I tried to avoid that so that you guys could focus on blend when you're doing blend and focus on classic when you're doing classic. Yeah, and so the so I just re mentioned this briefly. I like to get ahead of myself, I guess, is that um, we do have a PSO blend workbook now that we are um, posting in each classroom. So this includes a summary of all the the course elements, um, you know, and this is something that people can easily share with their supervisors. But it has you know key points from the webinars and um, the assignments and meetups, sort of giving people like a really you know there are those people in the world who really want to know what's coming and they want to be able to easily share that information with others, um, especially with the required attendance of meetups and required um, uh, turning in assignments at it by a certain time. Um, so this is this is now a feature that we've added and um, they're posted in each of your classrooms. So, so everyone will have that automatically when they get in there, access to it. And if you want to take a look at it ahead of time, we'll send a link um, when I send you guys the copy of these slides after the session. So let me make sure I write that down. And sorry we didn't get you a copy of the slides before. I think the holiday kind of threw us off a little bit. <laughs> Darn holidays and days off. Okay, so I'm up next. Um, this is a refresh for many of you, but there are a couple people that have not taught since um, last fall. So basically, as Bethany mentioned, um, the new policy is that all PSO blend session assignments are required, and this is the language that's listed in their welcome packet, or Guide to Entering Vista Service is the official name. And it basically says if members don't successfully complete all portions of the training, they will be removed from Vista Service. Um, I think this has been a fairly rare occurrence the last couple rounds, but there are a few people that just didn't end up finishing everything, and I think they did have to deselect um, a couple people, but it's, it's pretty rare. 
we are getting to the point now where supervisors are getting into the flow of this, and I think folks are realizing that this is required. It's not an add-on. It is a required training. So um, even though this sounds a little bit harsh, I think it also helps light a fire under people when they get behind because they actually, in fact, do need to um, complete all sections of the PSO blend, including meetups, and we'll talk about those in just a sec. And if you guys have questions, you can um, feel free to start typing them into the chat or um, maybe chat's probably the best spot for questions as we go. Member follow-up related to um, everything being required. So when someone misses an assignment, and we have a very clear list of when you need to check in, when someone misses, uh, you will be using your JBS email account, and I'll talk about that again in a second, to email the member and copy their supervisor, their site supervisor, state office, and the VTU training coordinator for that particular event when they miss a, a meetup or an assignment. And basically you do that on the next grading period or after the meetup. And if they don't submit anything within 48 hours, then the VISTA training coordinator then starts following up with them saying you must turn stuff in or you're facing, you know, not being able to continue as a VISTA. So basically you send one reminder and then if they don't basically do what they're supposed to do, that's what Eric or Andy or Jessica or whoever the coordinator is will get involved and start emailing them as well. We have templates for all these messages so you don't have to come up with the language or anything on your own. So related to that, um, each of you has an email account through JBS. Um, Jenny Farrell sent out the logins a while back. I will resend your login information when you teach again if you haven't taught so far in 2017. So um, for those of you that haven't used your JBS email account yet, I will make sure to resend that to you when uh, you get assigned to a class. Um, Know that your Moodle and WebEx accounts have also been updated to be linked to this new email. So, for example, anything that goes through Moodle, including the facilitator lounge, messages from your classroom, all of those will go to your JBS inbox. And I know some facilitators have worked it out so that they have combined inboxes so it goes to their main email. There's tips and tricks for that in the lounge. Um, so if you want to try to send it to your main email, great. We just want all the emails going out to the state offices and the members to come from that JBS account um, so that we have sort of an official account that you're using. Unfortunately, we're not able to use the messaging system in Moodle to do this because we don't have all the stakeholders. We'd have to assign them to your class and that's just too much. So that's why we have to use this separate account. And Shannon has a, Shannon has a question. question. We send one reminder. Do we then need to circle back to VTU, confirm that we didn't receive anything within 48 hours, or do they just take the initiative? That's a great question, Shannon. So the way that we have worked out when reports are due, grade reports, it works out so that the VTU would know if that person didn't send in their assignment after your first reminder, your grade book would then be updated to show that they still haven't sent it in. So basically, the grade reports are the trigger for the VTU to take the next step after 48 hours. And we'll take a look at all those grading deadlines in a second, but basically we've streamlined it from two message reminders from you to only one message reminder. Yeah, and also with the caveat that you'll, you'll be keeping, so if someone sends their assignment in, that you'll go in and um, and mark that person off because I think what um, what we have at least our experience with the VTU um, and their process is that they actually go in there um, if they get that report they often go into the classroom and just double check that that person still has not received still has not sent in because there's always a little bit of a delay between when we we send them the report and then when they actually get to you know um, follow up with those people so. Um, it's important to keep, which which is part of the next um, part of the next section that I'm going to talk about is keeping your gradebook up to date. Um, so, shall we look at the remind the deadline yeah. reminders that might help folks too? Yeah. 
So, um, so week one, you've got um, essentially that's the week where the VTU is um, holding a couple webinars, um, but, it, but there aren't any grading deadlines this week. And um, the only thing that we're asking you to do is that if there's anybody who has not logged into the Moodle classroom, um, and you can see that by clicking on the participant list and then seeing if they've never logged in yet. Um, and just send them in a message and say, hey, I noticed you haven't been in here. And we do have some messaging around about that. But um, just to give them that nudge, and then that's it. And um, then those, those folks will, will get caught um, in, the net, in a reporting that we do um, at the end of the week. Or is it the beginning of the week? We've changed things. Um, so they'll, they'll then, from there, the VT will take over if, if folks are just not logging in at all, and we'll see if there's something wrong um, with them. So um, that's, that's week one. So week two, um, you'll be, uh, on Monday, you'll be checking off all the assignments that were due that Sunday night at 11 Pacific and sending those assignment reminders that we mentioned. Um, we have language in, in the facil facilitator guide that we put, you know, because definitely this, this can, um, you know, because you're um, CCing people on these um, emails, it, it can feel a little uncomfortable to um, be CCing uh, additional people, like all the levels of the chain, basically. <laughs> we were calling it um, the supervisor and, you know, the, the priest and the, you know, everybody. Second grade teacher. Second grade teacher. Their mom. Exactly. So we're, we're, we found that, um, and, and we can hear from some other, some folks who, who have been through this, but we found that that um, often gets their attention and then there isn't, um, you know, it's, it's sort of uh, gets people back on track and um, lets them know that this is important and um, usually nothing is, uh, nothing else is needed in most cases, I think. Uh, there's a Wednesday dating gra gra grading deadline that is, um, you know, after that meetup, you're, um, again, checking off people's attendance. And then if they, if they didn't complete, if they didn't attend, then you're reaching out and saying, I know you didn't attend. Can you please complete this makeup assignment, giving them a deadline for that makeup assignment, and then also um, entering that kind of information in the, in the um, in the grade book. So um, those are both uh, Wednesday by the kind of toward the end of the day. And then um, by Friday, you're, uh, you're making sure that your, your uh, assignment grades are up to date. Uh, and then we, we grab that information and then share that with the VTU so that they know um, how people are doing. And um, yeah, and that's for both weeks and two and three have a very similar um, kind of pattern. And we've also created, I know some of you have used it in the past, it's like a facilitator. What, I, I, the naming, we have trouble with, I have trouble remembering naming conventions, but essentially it's a facilitator task list. It gives you, um, you know, it'll say this, it'll say Monday by 11, and, you know, Monday, Wednesday, things that you should be doing. And it includes things like even preparing for those meetups and. Um, you know, checking in and all that kind of stuff. So we've we've tried to make sure because we know there's a lot going on and a lot of um, you know things coming and going and time related things. So we try to make that easy for you. So um, then then week four, um, we uh, have a Monday 11 a.m. Um, final missing assignments, and so um, we. Tell people that they need to get this done by um, Wednesday. So again, it's just kind of the cleanup week where you're um, you're saying, you know, really need to do this, and um, if it's not in their final. So for students, their final grading deadline is Tuesday, Tuesday. and then you guys have. Wednesday to get all of your grades up to date. So it kind of gives them a little bit of a fudge if they send it in later than Tuesday, but basically Wednesday is sort of the, that's when your final report is due. Yeah. And then we ask that you keep an eye on your course through the end of week four, um, but that it officially ends at the end of week four for you as well. So basically, you know, in case anything comes in after Wednesday, we would ask that you email your VTU coordinator and say, hey, Amy, finally turn that thing in because they could be in the process of deselecting someone. So we just ask that even though Wednesday's the final report to just keep an eye on your course until 
uh, the end of week four. And then I see that Maria asked a question, um, will we have the supervisor emails available by the first deadline, which I'm guessing is Monday of week two? Um, previously, these were missing. We should have all the supervisor emails. If for some reason you don't have a supervisor email, just email the VTU and the state office. So use the emails that you have. Um, but I think at this point we are getting to the place where those emails are getting uploaded in a timely manner. So yeah, there's um, I think that they've they've got a, a little bit of a bigger team now, and they're able to you know really double check ahead of time that those emails are in there because they realize that you need them in order to to do this step. So um, yeah, yep. great question, though, Maria. Uploaded, yeah. Okay. Any, I'm going to unmute. I'm going to unmute all. So if you're eating chips, now's a good time to mute yourself. I'm unmuting all. Are there any questions? Anybody have a question verbally about anything we've covered so far? Grading, reminders, email, any of that? We've stunned them into silence, Bethany. Okay, I'll mute all and we'll just go ahead and continue and feel free to throw questions into the chat. Yeah, we have a few more things on grading and, and many of you are, um, most of you are um, familiar with this grading. We have three, um, basically three possibilities. Uh, and so we've got one is completed and that's um, when someone has completed something or attended, you, add, you put a one in the grade book. Um, the default is is not submitted and did not attend, and so that'll happen if they if they if you don't if you just leave the the um, the assignment so nobody sent, submitted anything or did not attend, so you just leave it as a, a dash mark, and um, we'll actually uh, one thing to note for sure is that when you have a um, a dash mark or this third rating, which is a zero, which means it's submitted but it's not acceptable, that we're asking that you include a, uh, a comment. And we've created some spaces for those, um, or I'm sorry, that in each assignment, um, there is a place to add those comments. And um, so what happens, and that was a request from the VTU because what happens is they're, you know, getting zero or they're getting a, a dash and they're like, huh, what's you know, what's happening with the situation. We, they want to know as much as they can. So we're asking that you um, add some comments if you have a zero or a one. And then uh, just more about the comments. We have some some stuff here. So it's, it's really to um, enhance the member experience. Experience. And so, you know, that's giving them the feedback about, and I, and I know many of you have been, um, who've, who've taught this, uh, you know, in particular like the FAD assignment and just knowing, making sure that they understand and um, and you can you can really see when there are some um, places that they they don't get it completely or they're, or you're looking for more or you're kind of, um, making sure that they're kind of on, on the right track. So those comments that you're adding, one thing for you to note too is that those are those are something that um, the students will see. Um, and Amy's got a couple. We've got some examples like later on about mm -hmm. the um, kind of some of the the comments that you'll you'll you can use to put in there. But those are some so so those are things that the the members see. But then it's also um, you know a way to keep the VTU up to date on where things are. Um, and then, the, yeah, so there's the, the comments are visible to the member, which is important as far as like how you how you frame those. But they can be like, you know, um, you know, Kelly is is um, planning on turning this in on 6:11. Contacted Kelly, planning to turn this in on 6:11. It turns it turns out to be a little bit of a reminder for that individual, so that they know that you're tracking, and then also for the VTU, so they know what's happening. And each time that you, it's same as before, each time that you grade and leave a comment, the member gets a notification. So they'll see, oh, I got a zero and I need to go back and fix my VAT assignment. Um, I did not put this in here, but it just dawned on me that some of you may not know this. 
Members are asked now to upload their VAD. It's not required, um, but it is something that they're asked to do when they turn in their VAD assignment. You're not required to look at every VAD, but I know that especially in this last round, for example, that there were a couple people that they got the VAD assignment, the facilitator got the VAD assignment, and it just wasn't, they're like, what? And so when they were able to then also open up the VAD and look at the assignment and the VAD together, it was a nice opportunity to provide deeper feedback. So the VADs are being uploaded, they're not required, you're not required to look at them, but it may be helpful if an assignment is unclear and you wanna see, okay, is the member getting it? You know, what's really going on here with their VAD? So I think that that's something that everyone asked for and I hope that you guys find that useful. And then I appreciate Ryan's tip here. Remember to use the override button when you're scoring, but otherwise your comments don't stick. And we'll talk about that in just a second. It's also in the tech guide, but it's basically one button that you have to push in order to make your comments show up. And I think some of you are familiar with this. We're checking for that too before we do a report. So if we're like, why are there no comments in Ryan's grade book? And we go in and see that they're there and there's just one button that he forgot to push. So we're also checking for that, but it's, it's an important thing, the override button. You'll wanna get familiar with that one. Thanks, Ryan. Okay. So this is just some grading reminder, good practice, and, and thanks, Ryan, for bringing us into the, <laughs> the good practice. So um, what we've found is that reviewing assignment, you, or reviewing and assigning a rating to each submitted assignment by Monday morning, and then um, checking daily. Uh, you know, I think people have, I don't know when people um, do the do the update, but setting aside some time just to check in and make sure that, um, you know, if people are, you're expecting some assignments or you're waiting to hear back from people, you go check in and then, you know, update update the grade and update and take out those comments and then you're all set. Um, emailing VISTAs about assignments that have a zero or a, or a dash and providing a comment in the grade book. So we just kind of covered that a little bit, but just it's important to, um, for, for both them and for the VTU to know know what's going on and where that that's at. Um, adding a date to your gradebook comments this is a this is a good one. So um, because the gradebook doesn't have a timestamp, it helps us to know when the comments entered. So include a date, for instance, like six ten seventeen in the comment box when you post a comment in the gradebook. So adding that date, you know, contacted Kelly six ten, um, turning expecting assignment turned in this date at this time. So, um, you know, those are those are just helpful. Um, and then providing a due date for incomplete assignments in the comments, so making sure you let the student know or the VISTA know that, you know, they have a certain period of time to get that in and, um, and, and that it's important. So, um, you know, and I think our, uh, our template has that, some suggested language around that, so um, you can adapt. Uh, that language for your use when communicating. We talked about that. Great. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and pause and unmute. Are there any questions about anything else that we've covered? Let me unmute you guys. Unmute. All right, you're live. Are there any questions? Hi, Amy and Bethany. This is Amy. Hi, Amy. Um, real quick question for clarification, because I, I was a little hesitant when I was doing this the last time. Um, after they've turned in something, you know, let's say we've done the greater report, they didn't turn something in, so we added a detailed comment about when we send emails and everything. And then after they turn it in, we're supposed to delete that comment, is that correct? Yeah, or you could even, you could delete the comment if they've already turned it in and then you give them a one that shows that it's uh -huh. turned in. The, the report would show one, it's all good. Um, yeah, and then if things still have not, obviously if things have not been turned in or they're, they haven't gotten to the one from a zero maybe to a one, that's when you wanna have a comment for any ratings that are zero or minus. Okay, yeah, it's felt so weird to delete the history of what had happened, so I wanted to make sure I was doing that right. Yeah, no problem. And we do keep, you know, we keep a copy of all the grade reports that we pull, so if we did ever need to go back, we could. Um, 
But yeah, you would just take it out once they have a one. And of course, you know, you guys are welcome to leave comments in any assignment that you like. Um, we just ask that you keep the, the numerical ratings up to date as well so that VISTA knows they don't need to hassle folks anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thanks. Other questions or comments or best practices folks want to share? Okay. I will just keep plugging along here then. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody again so we don't have any background noise. Okay, so let's talk briefly about meetups. Um, obviously, one of the things that we've all been striving to do around our meetups is encouraging engagement, and we have um, the meetups look very similar to what they looked like in the fall with a few little tweaks here or there. But I wanted to share with you some tips and strategies that we have noticed people using um, in the last couple rounds. So if you do have a VISTA leader, which as long as we know you have a leader, you'll know you have a leader, um, or you have members that are particularly engaged or have a lot of great energy, we really encourage you to, um, to use those folks to sort of seed the voice discussion in your meetups. So here's an example of what you might do or say, I really appreciated your response to the poverty assignment. Um, what you had to say was really important, and I'm hoping you'll share something about that during the meetup. So just, you can kind of pave the way a little bit. I think leaders especially and other members who are more engaged, um, folks like to be asked, so that might be one strategy. It may or may not work, but I know that um, in the last couple rounds people have had success with this. Um, for the chat, so you might try um, using the chat instead of calling roll at the beginning, just as a way to um, move things forward in the, in the first part of the session. You might do something like, I want everyone to answer this prompt in the chat as we get started. What's the best thing that happened to you today? Or what surprised you about your site? And then you would have a list of all the names in the chat and you can check those off your roster. So that's another option to sort of get things going. You're welcome to throw in engagement prompts like we had at the beginning if you like to get people talking. Um, usually they're not too shy about using the chat. They're more shy about using their voices on the phone. And then just ways to build on member comments when you're doing your meetup, um, just making those connections like you would do in person. So Amy's doing a great job focusing on social media marketing. Who else is also focusing on social media marketing? Type your name into the chat or would you like to share on the phone some of the things that you'll be doing in the next year around marketing? So just a couple little ways to try to encourage um, engagement in the meetups. Again, you just never know what you're going to get. If your folks aren't talking, don't feel like that is something that you did. It's usually just a dynamic of the group, um, but these are some things that we thought might be helpful to try to get people talking and engaging. Any other strategies that folks who have taught in the last couple rounds want to share for encouraging engagement in the meetups? You can type those into the chat or I will unmute everybody so you could use your voices. Any other strategies for encouraging engagement in the meetup? Um, this is Amy, and, um, and I just did this last round, and I actually, I, this is fairly new for me, I think, or at least that I was aware of. I had several leaders in my group, so I actually emailed them in advance and asked them if they wouldn't mind thinking about one particular question and um, being willing to verbally respond to it. Um, in hopes that that would then spur others to participate verbally at different times when I offered that opportunity, and, and it worked well. They were all willing to do it, and I felt like my meetup was a little more engaging than it has been in the past. Wonderful. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, I think the leaders, I feel like it's almost their duty to help, right? It's mm -hmm. like you guys might get used to it now because you'll be supporting these folks as you go. Great. Any other strategies around encouraging engagement in the meetups that folks want to share? I see Maria posted a thing about nicknames. Thank you, Maria. Go ahead. 
Amy, this is Ellen. Are you opposed to us adding a slide or two in case we forget because we're managing a webinar, talking on the phone, and maybe in part looking at a script? Are you opposed to us adding a prompt like you had just articulated, the three you articulated, as a slide? Um, I think it's fine. I just uh, you can add a prompt. There are prompts already written into um, the slide notes uh, for each of the PowerPoints. I think a lot of the stuff that we're saying here about engaging leaders would be things that you would do in advance. So, Amy, when you ask the um, leaders to think about a question, how far in advance did you do that? Um, trying to think of their meetups are on Wednesday. So I think I asked them like the end of the week prior just so I gave them enough time to think about it. Great. Okay. So that particular strategy isn't listed in your PowerPoint notes, but there are like specific prompts like, hey, would anyone be willing to read this slide, which are written into the notes in your PowerPoint. And there are other places where it's like, can someone answer this question that's on the screen, this reflection question. So you're welcome to add if you need to, Ellen. Um, but we did try to put them in as well in the notes for you guys because I know you're managing a lot of things at once on the, on the meetup. I guess that was my intention. If, if they're in the notes, I hit 98% of what's in the notes. But I know if it's in a slide and I see it, I'll definitely get that as well. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. Absolutely, and like like you guys saw on this first slide, I put a little call out box that said chat or whatever. You can add things like that. Feel free. And thank you, Sarah, for clarifying because I don't always hear the question right. So I appreciate that. Okay. Any other strategies before we move on? Okay, and just so you guys know, the way I'm managing the mute and unmute, I'm just going participant, and then I'm going to mute you guys, and I'm going mute all, so you're all muted again. And then when we get to the next one, I'll go participant, unmute. So, again, I know that's something that's a toggle that you have to do with on, on your meetup. Okay, so I know Bethany touched on this, but the meetups are required. Uh, we had to get down to... <laughs> the nitty gritty on what constitutes having attended a meetup because it came up. So here we are in this place. Um, they have to be at least, they must attend at least 20 minutes of the meetup or they're required to do a makeup assignment. So they can't just log in for five minutes and then log off and have attended. That doesn't count, right? You got to go to class in order to get credit. So if they don't, then they would be getting the makeup assignment, which I'll talk about in just a second. So we did put a little note at about the 20 minute mark for um, folks to just check really quick if there's someone missing on your list to go through your participant panel briefly and just see, did Bethany ever show up? Um, you can also do a verbal call, hey, I'm looking for Bethany. Bethany, if you're here, if you could say hello or type your name into the chat so that you can do a quick attendance sweep for anyone that might be missing at the 20 minute mark. If they're not there by the 20 minute mark, then they are absent, um, even if they log in at 30 minutes and they need to do the makeup assignment. I don't think this has been a big issue for folks, but if anyone has um, tips or strategies from the last couple rounds, let me know. Um, hopefully folks know these are required. Supervisors are supposed to know they're required. I'm hoping it's not an issue at all, but if so, um, they can do a makeup assignment. And here's the overview of the makeup assignment. So basically, you'll post a copy of your PowerPoint slides in PDF to a forum um, following your meetup. And then you'll just send an email uh, to the member copying their stakeholder group and let them know they have a makeup assignment. And then all the member needs to do is just reply to the email with their finished assignment, and there's a template for this. Uh, you guys will see the email template for missed assignment. They just reply with their answers, and that's pretty much it. Um, there is a deadline for it. It's listed in the, the template for the message. Um, but they basically just have to answer the reflection questions, and that will suffice for their meetup makeup assignment. 
And then Raphael, I see that you left a, a tip here. Do you want to talk? I'm going to unmute you. Do you want to talk a little bit about that tip? I'm going to unmute you guys. Okay. Raphael, do you want to share a little bit more about um, the loop concept? Well, there are a number of slides that that um, allow participants to um, kind of uh, put themselves in the process, like in the loop. Some of them are just starting and some of them are cautiously contributing. And in the beginning of that, of, of that exercise, I asked them to use the name tag to place themselves in that process. Where do they think they are? Like you just did with the Amy um, tag, main tag. And that allows me to ask them, well, why do you think you're there? Because some people actually, after the first week, they, they think that they already have succeeded and are making great contributions and and kind of like um, I'm trying to bring them to reality. I mean, you're just starting. What do you think? Um, you're already uh, high up in the mountain with that, and it it works because others enter the conversation and feel free to understand that they're just beginning and they're starting to actually um, assess the uh, challenge of serving as a beast. Great. Thank you, Raphael. So that in okay. particular is in that second meetup where they look at the service cycle or cycle of service. Um, and then all I did was I went to the annotation tools, which is the little pencil on the left-hand side of the screen under Quick Start, and I clicked mm -hmm. on the arrow, and then I was able to put my little name tag on the screen wherever I wanted to. And there's instructions about that in the notes, too, but that's a great tip. Thanks. Yeah, anytime you can get them to interact with the WebEx is considered engagement. So, you know, feel free to be as creative as your brain will allow you to when you're juggling all that extra stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about final good practices, and then we will move on to wrapping things up. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody again. Okay. So these are a few things that we've noticed can be overlooked pretty easily with all the other things that you guys are paying attention to. Um, we are tweaking pretty regularly the messages that are in the facilitator guide for follow-up um, so that they have the right tone or there's a date stamp or whatever it might be. So um, it's important that you use the templates that are in the facilitator guide. So you'll want to make sure to download those or copy and paste those each time you teach because they do change um, from cohort to cohort. Um, also, there is a new activity where members are assigned into triads and they're asked to comment on each other's minute intros and then they're asked to comment a little bit later. So one of the tasks that you'll need to do is assign triads and post a list of triads in your classroom. And it's in the facilitator guide, but it's something you don't want to overlook because then they'll come to you and say, I don't know who I'm supposed to respond to. So remember to assign triads, and again, this is all in the facilitator guide. And then we still have the, um, the sort of the Power, or I'm sorry, not PowerPoint, but the Excel file where you can list their service site information, what they're focusing on in their VADs, and then any sort of fun facts about the particular member so that you can help make those connections between members and their commonalities. So this is something that you'll want to start before your second meetup. And we've heard that it's great to have that little checklist, the, the Excel file with you when you're looking at VADs and minute intros and seven things about me so that you can start populating um, that worksheet with all the different elements and commonalities between members. So that's something that you'll want to sort of use from the beginning to put together that Excel worksheet. And again, you'll refer to it in your meetups and then you'll share it with your members at the end of the course. And then I think we've probably said this enough times now, just keeping the gradebook comments up to date and making sure that your comments are visible by using the override button, 
which is in the top of the grade book, and there are instructions for that in the technical guide, and you can always ask Bethany or I, and we can help too. So those are some of the things that can be easy to overlook. Um, any other good practices that folks have found useful that you want to share? And I'll unmute, or you can type them into the chat. Any other good practices that our 2017 facilitators have used that you want to share? I think for the triads, I've noticed that people just simply, you know, start at the top of the list and do the first three A's and the next three A's and then the next three on the list. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. We just want to give them a, a small group to interact with. This is Shannon. I would say in, in regards to you know, the triads in particular, one thing I did was just waited a few days to see who was really, really active on the message boards and tried to work one of those individuals in each triad group. So I kind of had a sense that there was somebody who was going to take some initiative and get the ball rolling, and that seemed to work pretty well. Excellent. Yeah, so just finding people that are pretty active so that they have, you know that they're going to likely respond to someone. That's great. It's not required. It's not a required thing that they respond. But we were hoping by grouping them up that they would have a little peer pressure to interact, um, but it's not uh, required. <laughs> and then, Maria, you said using filters in the grade book. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Hi. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, wonderful. Yes. So there are some filters in the grade book that have um, proven to just make life a little bit simpler when grading. Um, there's the submitted and then the not submitted. So if you go in, um, you can sort by um, the assignments that have already been submitted, the ones that need to be graded, or the assignments that aren't turned in. So that that becomes really helpful, especially when um, when putting in comments for the ones that have not been submitted. And it's, and it's on the bottom. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of the grade book, um, it's down there on the left-hand side towards the bottom. So you can sort by basically by the grade number, it sounds like. Yeah, you can sort by if the assignment has been submitted or not, and then another sort that you can use is um, if it needs grading. Wonderful. That sounds like yes, a it's a great tool. It's a great tool. Any other um, tips or good practices that people want to share? And then I see, Raphael, your question, are the triad responses just for the minute intro assignment? You know what? I need to check on that because I think that there's the minute intro where they're supposed to give feedback on the minute intro, but I think there's one other place where they use their triad. Looking forward, maybe? I think it might be looking forward. I'll check on that and get back to you guys mm -hmm. um, when I send out the slide deck. I believe there's two times they do the triads, but I will check. Triad assignment. Okay, any other good practices or anything folks want to share? We're going to wrap up after this, but we have, we have time. So feel free um, to continue to share any of your strategies in the facilitator lounge like we've done in the past. So here are the next steps. So before your next delivery, you don't necessarily have to do this now. Um, you can wait until you're assigned to a cohort. But these are the things that we'll ask that you do for prep before your next delivery. So you'll want to review the latest sample course. And I put a URL in here because we now have a sample course online on the VISTA campus that supervisors or members can also look at. So um, I'll make sure you have this URL and you can just use this slide as your guide and check out the latest sample course before your next delivery. Um, take a look at the facilitator task 
calendar, which is that sort of checklist Bethany was talking about. It's on the facilitator lounge. And then, of course, it's important to take a peek at the facilitator guide before your next delivery. If we make major changes, we'll tell you, but we do, you know, tweak, like I said, we tweak message reminders and, and language and things like that. Any major changes, we will make sure to communicate those to you. And then, as Bethany mentioned, you'll want to, if you have not done so already, record an expanded version of your introductory video. And basically, that is a combination of your regular minute intro, and there's also a script that provides an overview of what to expect in the VistaBlend course. So it's a little longer than it was before, so you'll want to redo your video to include the introduction and, of course, your minute introduction. And then for each round, um, be sure to download the latest meetup slides. Again, those change, so we always keep the most up-to-date version on the facilitator lounge. And then the other important pieces, um, just log in to your JBS email and your WebEx account just to make sure that those are, you can get in okay and you don't have any login issues. Um, I think WebEx in particular, check that before your meetup so that if, um, you're not able to get in, we can troubleshoot that uh, well in advance of your meetup so you're not um, having to try to deal with that and get started on a meetup at the same time. And then, um, of course, for uh, be sure to, on your, Indy will add one hour for today's webinar to your next uh, work order. And so um, she has asked that you wait until she sends your work order before you invoice, but you will be reimbursed one hour for today's webinar. And then when you deliver a session, if there's prep time needed, I'll let you know um, when we send your contract email, we'll give you some time for prep if needed for that one as well. And if you guys ever have questions about the billing stuff, feel free to email Indy. Um, she can help out with that anytime. Okay, so I'm going to unmute. Any questions that people have at all about what we've covered today or anything else you want to share around tips for, for delivery? Hey, Amy, this is Dee Dee. Um, I missed the first 15 minutes, so I can watch that sometime, but um, has the problem been fixed with trying to ensure that everyone who is online this next go around actually has a computer? Because last time I had several in um, the East Coast area as well as down south that didn't have computers and it was just, it was challenging. Yeah, absolutely. So we're doing the best we can to fix that. What the members do now is that when they, um, get their guide to entering service, they're asked to go on the VISTA campus and they have pre-work. And one of the pre-work assignments is a little self-assessment on whether or not they have what they need to be uh, technology-wise to be successful in blend. So Scott gets those, Scott Weinrobe, and if he sees somebody says they don't have a computer or whatever it might be, he'll follow up with the VTU. So we're hoping that that extra safety net will catch anybody that doesn't have the technology that they need. But if you guys find out that someone doesn't have what they need, let me know and we can try to um, problem solve that together. I think yeah, the other half of that would be to um, go on the supervisor side because I think part of that problem was that some of the supervisors thought that they had and there was some sharing and so it, it might be wise to use a two-prong approach to that. There was just, it was a major thing last time in my group, but hopefully they all have them this time. It's just, yeah, and we've right. expanded the communications to the supervisors, so they also get their own little kind of, okay. excuse Good. me, welcome email, and it okay. states clearly these are the requirements for both the, your members' participation as well as technology requirements, and it's very clear that they need to have a computer that they can use, not a mobile phone or not their cell phone or anything like that. They need to have a computer. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello. Go ahead, Raphael. Yeah, um, has, there, has there been any change regarding the um, 
optional versus the required assignment because often I don't get too much feedback after the first week for the optional ones. There has not, so there are a few assignments that are things like reflect on the, what you saw in this video that are not required. Um, we have not changed that. So if they don't turn in something that's not required, there's nothing we can really do. Um, okay. Yeah, and that's really like one assignment, which is the poverty measure one. And then some of the, so, so in some cases they'll have to do an assignment, but there's a second part of it where it's like the triad thing where they're supposed to comment, but if they don't comment, it's not gonna, you know, affect their grade. They still did the main assignment. But do they actually um, are aware of what's required and what's not? They should be, because it's listed in their guide to entering service. It lists all okay. the assignments required. Yeah, we know some people are like, oh, that triad response is not required. I'm not doing it, which is too bad. Um, yeah. And we didn't make those required because they're really hard to grade and you guys would have to be going through the forums and picking off names and it just felt a little too cumbersome. We hope the peer pressure aspect will encourage people to interact, but they may not. Um, but it is it should be on their guide to entering service what is required as far as the assignments for the blend. Great, thanks. Other this questions? Is Amy. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, this is just a would be great if in the future. Um, I'm getting to a point where, you know, I really like my notes and my slides and my PowerPoints for my meetups. And at some point it would be really great. And I know y'all don't have a lot of time, but if there is like a, a little something, tell us like only this slide was changed. Because otherwise I'm going through it each time. and and edit, editing each slide, and it would be nice to get to a point where I'm just looking at the ones I know were updated. Does that make sense? Yeah, we can, um, we can give you guys kind of some change notes on which slides were updated when we do that. I'm happy to do that. Okay. And it's not an essential. I just like that would, at some point, that would be great as you did, make less changes. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I know. I, I was thinking about what your guys' facilitator guides look like for Classic and how they get marked up and used and highlighted. And every time we change it, it's, I know it's more prep for you guys. So I hear you. We did, we, we did lessen the requirement around coming up with some social networking strategy in the meetups this round. Um, but that's the main change. So I'll try to put those change, I will put those change notes into, um, I'll put them in the forum in the lounge. Yeah, I think the changes are, things are settling a little more now and um, with both the curriculum and the meetup stuff, but you're right, there are little tweaks here and there, but I think things are settling and we're feeling pretty good about a lot of it. That's right. And I, I will say that one of the strategies we used in the last couple months is there were times when we didn't even have a training webinar. We just sent out like a PowerPoint with a bulleted list of any of the changes. So if there are any tweaks this summer, if we need to have a call, we will. But if we don't, we'll just send you guys a change, kind of a list of changes. But Bethany and I, of course, are here for you um, to support you. Scott and Kevin are on the back end with the technology. And then Indy is here around reporting and the registrar duties. Um, and then each of the, the classes will have a VISTA training coordinator assigned to it. So feel free to utilize your people if there's anything that you need. <clears throat> Great, and thank you, Raphael, for sharing your goodbye message. Um, reiterating quotes and statements from the members. I really appreciate that. Okay, cool. anything else before we wrap up? Okay, and just to model good roll call behavior, is there anyone that's just on the phone? 
not in WebEx. Okay, great. And if you missed any of this, I did record it. I think that I, I might have missed a little bit at the beginning, but we will make sure to get the recording out to folks. I appreciate you all for being here, and it's going to be a great summer. I just know it. Thanks, everybody.